All right, so tonight's homework is on inference or inferring, and hopefully by the end this will be a nice little review uh, for what we're going to be doing uh, for our first proficiency for the Holocaust Historical Fiction Unit. So at the end of this tutorial you will understand the basics on inference, how you can use your background knowledge and the clues from the text to help you make an inference. All right, so again, anytime that you see the little pencil in the corner, please remember I would like for you to take some notes. This should be short and sweet tonight. All right, so good readers um, infer. And to infer, that means you use clues from the text as well as your own knowledge on the topic or personal experiences that you might have um, to understand the text without being explicitly told. So explicitly told means the author is not coming right out and saying it in the text, you are getting all the clues and all the information and developing predictions and understanding based on what you see. So you're filling it in, in your head. It's not exactly what's written on the page. So a good reader should be able to respond to the text by thinking about the historical context. So that's why we started today in class learning about all of the background information on World War II and the Holocaust that I believe you should know in order to understand some of the literature we're going to be looking at. You should be able to, as a good reader, ask questions and voice your own thoughts, as well as look at the facts that, provided, that are provided within the text to um, better further your understanding. And I would like to remind you also that predicting is a part of inferring. Good readers also infer in order to figure out what the author is really trying to get you to say or to understand. And good readers are able to infer because they look for clues in the pictures or the words to help them figure out what the book is going to be about. I think one of the pieces you guys need to understand is that you are constantly inferring whether you know it or not. We're kind of asking you right now to do some metacognition, which means thinking about your thinking. So um, to infer, again, you're reading between the lines, picking up the clues that the author is giving you, as well as your own background information to figure out more um, in-depth analysis of the text. So an inference comes from you. These are, I think, maybe it means, I'm guessing not, I predict. These are all kind of statements that in your head are constantly going on, whether you know it or not, as you read. I'm just asking you to pay closer attention to that actual process. So again, making an inference just means that you're putting all of the puzzle pieces together. More often than not, it's the clues from the text with your background information and personal experiences. It can be a few other things as well, but these are the biggest components. So um, another piece about the um, inference is that it's really what you see with evidence within the text or the clues from the text, as well as what you know. This is a big word. It's called schema. That's how you pronounce that. So this could be the background knowledge that you've researched and understood. It could be your own personal experiences. It could be maybe uh, reading another book and making those connections text to text. All of that is combined to get your inference, um, which creates a new meaning of the text and your understanding. Okay, so this is a very basic elementary style look at inference, but I just want to make sure that you're understanding that you do in fact do this on a regular consistent basis, you're just maybe not aware of it. So for example, you might see someone pull some Hall's cough drops from their pencil pouch in their binder or something. What you already know is that people that are sick or have a sore throat use cough drops. So instantly your mind registers, oh, this person sitting next to me must be sick of some sort. Or, for example, you might see um, a pink and purple feather pen on the desk, or just like a pink and purple pen or something. You know, in your brain, you automatically start to register people you've seen with that pen, or maybe you make the stereotype or generalization that girls generally use that pen, and so instantly you infer that that pen must belong to some girl in your class. So these are simple types of things that you do on a regular basis um, that is a part of, of inferring. Okay. There are a couple of different ways to infer. So this could be um, personal connections to the clues in the text. It could be your schema, your background knowledge, your information on the topic plus clues from the text. It can also be your own mental pictures, images, memories plus clues in the text. All of these work together to help you um, better understand what you're reading. Okay, so I would like for us to do a couple of practices, and we'll probably do this in class a couple of times as well, because I think these are kind of fun. So what I'm asking you to do right now is to take a look at this picture on the right-hand side here. What are these girls doing? Where are they? How do you know? So a good reader, again, is going to think about the clues in the picture, 
They're going to think about your background knowledge of if you've ever been to a place like this and your own personal experiences. So why don't you go ahead and answer this question. Where are these girls and how do you know? I'm asking you to make an inference based on the clues provided in the picture. So instead of a text, I'm giving you a picture, but still it's the same knowledge skill base. So you build an inference by taking in everything and making an educated guess of what you see. As soon as you're done with that, I've got one more picture and then you're done for today. Last practice. <laughs> okay, so why isn't this woman using a fork to eat her pie? How do you know? Again, you're answering all of what you know about this um, background knowledge that you know, your schema. You're thinking about clues in the picture. And again, you build an inference by taking in everything that you see. All right, you're finished for tonight. So it's a, bit, a, a really quick, easy review on inference. Don't forget to do the digital whisk portion for tonight. Um, remember, you'll get a big goose egg in your grade book if you don't get that part done and submit it. Be careful in the end, making sure that you see the screen at the, at, at the end that says thank you for your submission or your submission is recorded to know that you actually did complete it and turn it in. And I'll see you tomorrow in class. We'll grade the notes as well.